Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And I'm out here in a state forest area to reshoot the video from yesterday on judging distance with a compass. And I made a large error in that video yesterday, and I was counting half paces instead of full paces to get my offset angle to figure the tan to help us figure the distance. And that was a mistake that I intended to correct. And it's raining a little bit today, but if rain keeps you indoors or under a tarp, you're not much of a woodsman anyway. So we're gonna shoot it in the rain. But I'm also going to add a little bit of things to this video that I thought about after I shot the video yesterday that will help you a little bit as well with this and make it a little easier for you in the future. Now you can use any compass for this. It doesn't matter if it's a base plate compass, if it's a transit, or if it is some type of engineering or military compass, like a Kamenga, you could use all of them for this. We're using a transit to make it as accurate as we can. And because I only have one person, I'm here by myself. If I had a leapfrogger, I could send out on the azimuth line and watch him and correct him for that 90 degree angle, then it would be easy to use just about any compass I wanted to. But because I need to position that compass and shoot something off in distance and you get between that with my pace count and be able to line myself up by myself, I need to be able to have that compass on some type of tripod. And the transit is the easiest way to do that. So. We're gonna correct the problems from yesterday. I'm gonna talk you through a couple tips and tricks as well. Stay with me, we'll get started. All right, so if you remember from yesterday's video, what we're trying to establish is the distance from this ridge down into a ravine. Situation being, we're setting up for a hunt. Maybe we're gonna put a blind up here, something like that, we're gonna hunt this ridge. We're coming out early and we're scouting the area and we're trying to judge a few distances for either some type of a compound bow shot or a rifle shot or shotgun, something like that. We want to make sure we know about what that distance is so we don't have to judge it on the fly. Or it's just an observation point and we want to know what that distance is to the ravine from here. So we've picked out a tree with a red blaze on that tree and we've started the transit on that tree. Now realize that we're keeping the transit level. So our straight line is to the actual tree, not the blaze. That's going to add distance because the downhill will be the angle from that 90 degrees. And this distance is going to be longer than a straight line distance, but I'm gonna show you how to compensate for that without doing too much math in just a minute. All right, so the first thing we have to establish is our azimuth to that red blaze in the ravine. We have our transit set up and I can't get this phone too close to it or it will affect it, but we're sitting at right at 50 degrees, which is where we were at yesterday. Now, the next step in this puzzle is to write that 50 degrees down and then change our transit to 90 degrees this direction, all right? 90 degrees. Now, what we're gonna have to do then is we're gonna have to move this transit this direction 90 degrees, which is gonna give us 320. So we'll move this until the needle's pointing at 320. All right, once we have our transit at 320, what we wanna do is we wanna walk this 90 degrees and we want to pick an arbitrary number because we can't walk probably the same distance as we are away from this this direction, pace count, and you get that 45 degree offset because you've got uphill going into the woods down through there and you're gonna lose sight of the object that you're trying to get a bearing on, which is that tree with the red blaze. So we have to shorten that distance up and we're gonna use paces to do that. We're gonna take an arbitrary number, like 10 full paces in the same line, okay? And if we look through the transit, you can see a tree back there, and that's what we're gonna line ourselves up between the tree and the transit on that bearing, walking that 10 full paces. Okay, now, the other important thing to remember here is whatever arbitrary number I pick, I have to be able to see that target. And that's the problem with not being able to do that 45, where I shoot an azimuth, walk in a linear 90 degree line until I have a 45 degree offset so that the distances are equal. I lose sight of the object because I'm gonna go up into the woods. 
So I have to check when I get to that 10 pace spot and look down in the ravine and make sure I can still get a compass reading on that exact tree. And I can. So we're going to go there for a second reading. Okay, so our red blaze is right down there. You see it through there. And we're set up on that dude. And we're looking at about a 70 degree azimuth today, which is different than yesterday's, obviously, which changes that distance. Now we can go talk about the calculations again and talk about a way that we can compensate for that downhill angle, which is going to be a further distance than the straight line we're shooting to the tree. All right, back in the truck. Warm up the old hands a little bit. Now, remember that we have three angles that we have to deal with to make a triangle. So the first azimuth we shot was our starting point and it was down the ravine to the tree. Then we have to go 90 degrees from that to make sure that we're making that 90 degree angle right there. So we turned our compass to 320 from the original 50 to get that 90 degree angle. And that's where we started our pace count for our offset. We chose 10 paces. Now we'll have to convert this all to meters after the fact. That's very easy to do. So what we did was we paced off 10 at 320. We marked our spot. We moved our transit to that location and shot a third bearing down to the same tree, making sure you can see the object that you're trying to shoot to that you originally shot is important. So you may have to change that arbitrary distance depending on the situation, but 10 worked out for us today. I like 10, base 10 is a good number to work with. So we use 10. Now, what we need to do is we need to figure out what the difference is between the first azimuth and the second azimuth. The first one was 50, the second one was 70. The difference is 20 degrees. And we need to figure out the tangent of 20 degrees. Now we can figure that out with a calculator very easily on our phone, on our watch, with a regular calculator, or we can carry a tan chart in our kit, in our navigation kit. Tan charts, you can print them right off the internet and it will give you that tan number for every single angle. That's the easy way to do it. If you want to carry a calculator, if you happen to have a watch, a smart watch or a phone with you, then that would be very easy too. You just hit tan of 20 equals and it will give it to you. All right, so that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to take a calculator here, old Texas Instruments calculator. I'm going to put my glasses on so the old man can see. Woo wee Goodness gracious. And we're going to turn this bad boy on. And we're going to go tan 20 equals. 0.363 is the number we get there, okay? I don't know if you can see that or not. 0.363. Now we need to write that number down. 0.363. We'll grab our handy dandy notebook here. And we'll grab a pen above my head. And we'll write that number down. 0.3 six point three six three all right that is our tangent now what we need to do is we need to take the amount of paces that we use for our offset which was 10 and we need to divide that by the tangent point three six three so we're going to take 10 in our calculator here 10 whoop 10 divided by 0.363 equals 27.5, all right? So 27.5, I would go ahead and round up because it's downhill no matter what. So I would say 28, all right? What that's saying is it is 28 paces down that hill, all right? 28 paces down the hill. That's what it's telling you. Now. What we have to figure out is how many meters that is. For that, we're gonna use our pace count. So let's write the first number down, all right? Again, 10 divided by 0.363 equals 27.5, we're gonna call it 28. Okay, so now I need to figure out how many meters I walk per pace for my next calculation. So if I know my pace count is 62, and I take 100 and I divide that by 62, that is 1.6. That means I walk 1.6 meters every time I take a full stride. And that's the number I need for my next calculation. 
because now I can take that 28. I can times that by 1.6 meters per pace. And it's going to give me 44.8 meters to the bottom of that ravine. Now, knowing that it's downhill, and that's going to be a little bit longer distance, 45, 50. As long as you're within five meters, you're going to be pretty close as far as accuracy with a weapon goes. No problem at that distance. So that's what we're looking for. That's the easy way to figure that out. So just a quick recap on steps, all right? We wanted to figure out what the distance was from the top of a ridge to the bottom of a ravine. We shoot an azimuth to an object at the bottom of the ravine. We do a 90 degree offset and shoot that azimuth and get something lined up with that azimuth so that we can get in between the two and be on the correct line or he's a leapfrogger. And we step off an arbitrary number of paces and we use 10 in this example. Then we make sure when we get to that 10, we can still see the object so that we can get our third bearing. Our third bearing is taken and written down. The difference between the first bearing and the third bearing, when you subtract one from the other, is what we're going to calculate our tan off of. Now, once we have that tangent number, all we need to do is take the number of offset paces we used, divide it by the tangent, and that will give us the number of paces it is down the hill. We then need to figure out how many meters that is. So we take how many meters we walk with a single pace, we times it by that number, and that will give us the number of meters it is down the hill to the first azimuth that we shot. It's fairly simple, sounds complicated. The more you do it, the easier it gets. Listen guys, I apologize for having to shoot this video twice, but the fact of the matter is, everybody in the world makes mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Owning up to your mistakes, correcting your mistakes, and learning from your mistakes is the true key. And I'm all about that at the Pathfinder School. I encourage my instructors every day to learn something new, figure out something different, because the day you quit evolving, the day you quit learning something new, learning something better, changing the way you do things for the better, the day you quit with continuous improvement and become a one-trick pony and rely on what you've been doing forever is the day you're no longer an effective instructor. It's like taking a sixth grade teacher from 1975 and throwing them in a classroom in 2025. They're not going to be an effective teacher because the curriculum has changed, the way students are taught has changed, and the way students learn has changed. So all of those things are for the better. So I don't mind making mistakes and I don't mind making them on video in front of my audience as long as I can correct them after the fact and get the correct information out there to you. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. For all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I hope you'll join us at a class at the Pathfinder School Worldwide in 2025. And you can find the information for those courses on our website at selfrelianceoutfitters.com under the training tab. I'll see you guys on the next video.